Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. Double Power Hour. What week are we on? 21? I think it's 21. Yes, week 21. With uh, Arrow, Black Lightning, and The Flash. Mm-hmm. The Legend season finale is technically included in this, but we're going to do it separate because we have so much to talk about it. Mm-hmm. That's going to be separate. Yep. So hello. Welcome. Hi. Uh, w- yes, with me, uh, I'm Cleo. With me, I have Nikki and Rachel. Hi. Hello. If I sound because I am. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yeah, me too. <laughs> Going around. I'm just tired. <laughs> You're next. Well, see, I'm a little bit tired too, but that's because I had two huge bowls of French onion soup. <laughs> so I'm kind of slogging because I ate too much. I'm sleepy. Mm-hmm. What do we want to start with today? Flash. Start How about flash. we do that? Start with the You flash. guys can do that. Yeah. Did you like this episode of The Flash, Nikki? What did I think? Yeah. Did you like it? I like I like the part with Cisco and 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 Breacher, yes. but everything yes. else, I was null and annoyed, as the <laughs> title. You know what? Says. When I brought up the synopsis for this episode, and I saw the title was null and annoyed, I was like, yeah, I was pretty annoyed in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. No, like I, I said, agree. The, the stuff with Cisco and and Breacher, Breacher were great. Fantastic. I mean, as um, soon as I saw Danny Trejo was back, I was just like, yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's a Love great him. guy. Great actor, and he's hilarious even when he's in a serious role. So he's so funny. He just mm-hmm. grabs Cisco by the neck and says, "I need your help. You're giving me <laughs> mixed signals." <laughs> oh. The girlfriend's dad. Hmm. At least he doesn't have a shotgun by the front door. Yeah, his shotgun is his scary powers. <laughs> Which are oddly the same as Cisco's, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, the three of them all. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, with the introduction of Gypsy, we find out breachers are not... Uh, I mean, they're special. Clearly, there's not mm-hmm. many of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not u- unique. No. And so far, everything that Gypsy and Breacher can do, Cisco's been able to learn to do. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's so cute <laughs> how Breacher comes to Cisco and it's just like, I need your help. <laughs> well, I think he even said it that, you know, Cisco's the smartest guy he knows. Yeah. So, I mean, even if there were other sweet. Breachers. Uh, for him to go to. I think he'd go to Cisco for number one because the, he's just smart and he has all the technology in front of him and people who could possibly help him too, so. All that science shit. Yep. I mean, I, I understand why, like, yeah, the first, uh, to be concerned about losing your powers is definitely a thing to get help for, but the reason why is actually something that I'm I was kind of expecting. It's like you're getting old, man. You're getting old. Yeah. Your your, your powers. Your. I mean, Caitlin was like, yeah. Uh, so uh, vibing and breaching takes a lot of energy, and when you get older, you lose your abilities. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if that works the same, because you know, for speedsters too. But even though, like, their power feeds off the of speed force. It does, so. but they're. they're... Their bodies have to be able to handle it. And Mm -hmm. we saw this recently with Jay Garrick when they were trying to stop that nuclear bomb. Yep. And he just, he couldn't keep up. He was the first to fall out. I mean, Mm Jesse's still new to her powers, so. Yeah. She couldn't keep up either, but she lasted a lot longer than Jay did. Yeah. Uh, So I I guess age is a thing. Yeah. And. But. Yeah. I guess just the power needed to, to keep. Whatever they're doing, going. Please. I mean, I, it, I don't think it's a 
blast we're to see of Danny. Obviously, no. we're, like Breacher is still going to be around. He's still Gypsy's father. He still has to hold that, you know, I'm her daddy over Cisco's head, kind of like that intimidation. Mm-hmm. But for him to come back near the end of the episode and be like, you could be the new Breacher. Yeah, he offers and, him his job. Yeah, and I'm like, Cisco, I know Cisco's going to be like, you know what, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. And he's going to try to juggle both. He's going to try to juggle Team Flash and being the Breacher. And it's going to end horribly. Ultimately, I think he's going to choose Team Flash and then, you know, Gypsy be new Breacher. I think Gypsy but... being new Breacher is a better idea. She's clearly more qualified than Cisco is, no offense. Clearly. <laughs> but because because uh, Daddy Breacher mm-hmm. um, went to Cisco first, I feel like he, he wants to do it to try and, and impress him. Yeah. And um, like I said, there's going to be that whole, like, trying to juggle both jobs for Cisco, and he's also working for the freaking police department as <laughs> a consultant. What does he do, though? He They call him, he shows up for two minutes, scans something, and says, oh yeah, that was a meta. Yeah, and, and then goes right back I mean, to Star Labs. It's like he doesn't do shit. Because the last time he did that, he sarc- sarcastically goes, "Yeah, it's just oh, a meta." It true. was like he was so pissed off. He yeah, just kind of really had this mad attitude. At that guy for almost no reason. Mm-hmm. I honestly, that Cisco man, he's so cute. <laughs> he's adorable. Yeah. Uh. I, for some reason, I guess I was Googling the, the stuff for today's episode. I, I was looking at the Cisco Chronicles again. I think, I know, we uh, talked Have about it a up- couple weeks ago or something. Yeah, we did. We mentioned it. Because we were talking about another character. kind. Oh, Mick. We were talking about Mick trying to, like, doing, like, a Tumblr thing where he's, <gasps> yes! his book. Oh, that'd be- yes. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, but, yeah. So, I, they keep it, they keep it up. Oh, it's updated? It's, yeah, it's updated for, like, all the episodes that have aired. Um, wow. And the most current one is him, you know, debating whether he should take the job or not. Mm. So, yeah, that's going to be probably for the next couple episodes. I, I, I kind of wish more people had, like, knowledge of the Cisco Chronicles. Yeah, like, cause... we stumbled upon it by accident. We did. Like, I think it was and... the web series. Yeah, the and they were like, series. "What is this Tumblr thing?" Um, and not even a lot of people are aware of the web series that are going on that are all connected in the Arrowverse, which and... we are behind on the cartoons, and we will hopefully catch up soon. Yeah, we have uh... the Ray and Constantine. Yes, I don't yes. know if Constantine is out yet. It is. It is okay. It is. Um, but <sighs> yeah, it's. It, it... It is a little extra, like, knowledge behind the scenes, you know, like, a lot of people really love Cisco and, you know, would love to know more about him. But ultimately, the show is called The Flash. Yeah. <laughs> so y- you don't get that much on Cisco rather than, like, just what's happening within the episode. So, yeah. But that's why I like this episode, because it actually gave us a little meat of what's going on with him. Makes me ask questions. Yeah, and it wasn't just him and uh, Harry arguing. No, <laughs> even though that's entertaining. Sometimes it's get it's been getting annoying lately because it actually um, important things are happening. Like Harry's making bad decisions, and and looking like fucking Aobard again. And now he's making bad decisions without telling people. He's sneaking oh. behind their backs. It's like, oh no, we're in trouble now. All right, I feel like this is intentional misdirection, though. They want you to make it seem like he's betrayed. I, I just don't know. It's just so dumb. I don't There's understand. Inner, the inner turmoil is just like you could just see it swirling inside of you and you can't. You just can't. Because it cannot be another Aobard. Like, no, I know. That, it, it can't. We can't it's, go down that road again. It's. I don't think it's an Aobard. It's more of a Devoe thing because Devoe's actually doing the same thing. He's keeping shit to himself, drugging his wife, drugging Yay! his wife to keep her from remembering shit. 
even though she happens to remember all the damn time, and it's just a fucking vicious cycle, and he's react like acting the same shit over and over again after he drugs her. It's like every, what? It's- every cycle though, she gets further with the the thing she's developing. So he just needs mm-hmm. to do it enough times. To not give her brain damage and to have her finish it without knowing. I I feel like brain damage. Brain is going damage to is happen. possible. <laughs> He's gonna no, I feel like it's gonna damage. happen, and it's gonna be like just before the last step, and Devo's gonna be like, "I can't finish this. She can't finish this because she's drooling in a chair <laughs> in a like I'm feeding her pudding. I can't, you know, like it's it's gonna get that bad, and Devo's just gonna. I have no idea. I think that's gonna where be the point going? where. Like, where is this going? I feel like the whole Devo thing has gone off the rails because he's gone crazy. Like, where can this go? And it, having that ultimate knowledge, uh, just like, even like to predict, um, which is all really Devo could do in the beginning was ha- like figure out outcomes and then choose the probable, best one and yeah. act upon. Yeah, probable uh, There's like, a 40, resolutions and stuff. 42% chance this bullshit will happen. Yeah. Um, Harry's kind of in the same situation. I think it's a little bit different, though. I don't think Harry's, you know, trying to figure out probable solutions. It's more like because he just he just pulled the the names out of the air for the the two remaining bus metas. Like he just knew them. Yeah, I'm really. They didn't explain that. He just like mm. thought about it and then figured it out. Yeah. So I'm actually concerned that it's a completely different way of knowing the future like i i know it's not like clairvoyance or anything that they're acting on but it's just like having that excess knowledge the way too much knowledge for a human brain to handle that uh dang it harry why are you being stupid you were just starting to get likable for a jackass (laughs) exactly i don't know man it's it's because the 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 point that Cisco made that he said I I will help you with this thinking cap if you do not use dark matter. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if Harry's using dark matter. Like, um, that's why he's in the chamber. That's what he's he, with Gideon. He, with Gideon, yeah. Because oh, Gideon man. will help him do whatever crazy science shit he needs. Oh, yeah. Man. I don't know, man. I just read who uh, did this one. And yeah. you know what? All your confusion? I totally understand it now. Oh, <laughs> Kevin Smith directed Kevin this one? Smith, yeah, this and Jay and Silent one. Bob were in it! They were in it. They were trying to, you know, load up a freaking <laughs> package, a big, and they're like, let's go get the, the, the gurney stuff. or whatever. Now, oh, it was... Let's go get the, the big, uh, uh, Trolley. Or trolley, yeah. It? They come back with a hand cart. The thing I used in college, flimsy ass shit. I'm like, that is not your big trolley. Like, mm. I don't <laughs> call bullshit. <laughs> but to be fair, um, the box that they were putting on the trolley may have been just like awkward for them to lift and oh, move. Course, and yeah. it didn't seem like it was heavy because what was in it was a little fucking box and a big, it was in a big freaking crate, a little goddamn fucking box. Like, what the hell? But. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny because it was Jay and it was Silent Bob, and they're like, you know, doing their banter back and forth. It was a really funny scene. Basically, I actually Jay had does watch- banter while Bob is like, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Something about him be uh, Bob being too weak, and I'm like, he probably just got out of the hospital from that surgery. That is yeah. true. <laughs> That's probably why they made that joke. But yeah, well, honestly, I it- think they were done filming when um. When maybe he had a heart attack. maybe it was before and that's why he was even weak i mean oh, that's the reason why he needed the surgery because it was getting really bad so i don't know i don't know either but it was still it was still very interesting that he put himself and jay into the the episode uh, it yeah. did add a little bit to it but it was that so leads in service. Oh, it was fan service definitely um but that leads into the meta this episode, and I thought she was so lame. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I, I didn't like her. I liked her. I just think maybe I liked her, but not her power. Yeah, 
And, and I, I'm not sure if this is even her power. I think it's just the way they introduce her and how she moved through the episode and then just... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she wasn't implemented properly is... Maybe not. But I mean, her I power have. was to make things float. Um, she Gravity. filled very... Gra- was it anti-gravity? Because, I mean, Cisco said to Barry that she filled him full of helium. And Wait. then and then mm. Ralph made the whole, why don't you burp like Charlie Bucket in Willy Wonka to get down. Because he was floating up on they the ceiling des- on a rope. Yeah, they describe her powers <laughs> as gravity manipulation. <laughs> Rachel's losing her shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they describe her powers. Because that was the most ridiculous part of that whole movie. And that whole movie oh, was ridiculous. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the blueberry is a hard second. <laughs> Violet, you're turning Violet. Uh, Those anyway, weren't even real burps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, it <laughs> describes her powers as gravity manipulation. Okay. All I've seen her do is make things really light and float. I guarantee you, if she comes back, she's going to be able to make something so dense and heavy it can't move. Mm. I think I think her powers go both ways. Um, she is th- based on a, a hero. Okay. No. No. And is yeah. a metahuman enemy of Hawkman in the comics. Okay. He's a man though, so that's that's I guess how they hid her identity. Behind a, you know, a name that doesn't exist in the comics. Janet Petty is not in the comics. No. Um, which is, I'm assuming, what they're, they've done for the last meta. They've hid whatever. It could be a new character, too. But they probably just hid whoever it is um, under a fake name. Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. <laughs> but... I love her hair, though. Like the color. I want her hair. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It really <laughs> made me think about c- coloring my hair again a funky, funky color, and I'm like, I, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I mean, maybe a streak, but my whole head—it's a bad idea. It's a lot of work. It is. It's like, so just hard for to the maintain. fronts. It's a lot of work. You can see how I just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That's how you go with a darker color. That when it grows out, it doesn't look as bad. Yeah, I might get like a a fade, so when it grows next time, so when it grows out, it doesn't look like oh, it just stops. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to get dark green in mine, so I was oh, thinking dark green as like well a, for my next like color. a hunter green. I was thinking of going purple, but color brigade. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh. Yeah, I I mean I liked her. I think we should get to the the. I'm sure the part the, both of us hated the most. It's fucking Barry and Ralph. It's like nonstop with those guys. Seriously, it's been every episode for the last like five episodes. There's always something between Barry and Ralph, and then they. It's like. <sighs> I don't know. It's becoming... I feel like this at the end of almost every Flash season where things just start to get repetitive. Like, last season with Savitar, it was just constantly people, you know, at Iris' side. She's, you know, breaking down or something. And, you know, I understand. Yeah, you have... Basically have a timer on your life, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. But, um... In this case, it's Ralph that has, like, that limitation on his life because at any point, Devoe can come around and just suck his brain and take his body and stuff like that. Um, so I get it. But then, you know, Barry also being fucking arrogant and not being able to uh, chill a little bit makes it a little bit harder on the team. Yeah. And it's that's been, like, repeating the last few episodes, and it's becoming really annoying. Yeah. And, and then I, I'm actually, I actually sad. Ag- agreed I'm a little. Actually... Oh, sorry. I agreed a little uh, bit with with Barry today, this episode, because yeah, guess what? Ralph did put him in a position where he could have floated away and never came back and just mm-hmm. died. Yeah. But then Barry started being insufferable, and I was just like, "You both just need to sit down, <laughs> just relax a little while." I mean, 
was Iris even in this episode? I don't she even was. Remember. She gave him like advice, but it was she, she just she was like Ralph stepped up while you were in jail, and that's like literally all she said. <laughs> she defended yeah, Ralph he, a little bit. I feel so. like I need more Iris, whereas yeah, before in the beginning of the season, I was like, please just <laughs> let her die. She should have died when Savitar said she was going to, you know, it's like, no, stop it. Now I'm like, you know what? I'd rather have Iris around than Barry being a little jackass. Yeah. Because that's what he's doing. I feel like I I wasn't, I'll be honest, besides the breacher parts, I was not paying that much attention to this episode. I really probably should have paid more attention. That's not the point. (laughs) I feel like Iris should have stepped between them when they were arguing. And she really didn't. I feel like she just hung back and let it happen. Because if she's team leader, letting your teammates argue like that is not great for morale. The thing is, she is team leader, but Barry still thinks he's team leader. So I think throwing Iris in the middle of that would have caused a little marital spat. I thought the entire point of the Run Iris Run episode was that Barry understands and then Iris understands. So, like, they understand each other. I thought that was the whole point of that episode. That was the whole point, but we know how Team Flash works. They they like to, you know, keep things inside and, you know, not, you know, keep secrets and feelings all deep in here. And then Put all of a sudden they blow. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. Uh, it's just... Some things <laughs> I, uh you know, thought had been learned, feel like they haven't been learned. Um, are you surprised? Me? I I mean, (laughs) I shouldn't be, but I am. (laughs) Characters didn't learn their lesson? (gasps) Oh, why? (laughs) No way. (laughs) That's yeah. That's exactly it. That they haven't learned shit from everything they've been through. That's it. <laughs> Red Red Bandit says CW seems to be having a villain problem with their DC shows, where the villains' plans are becoming more and more unclear. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, like Devoe. Yeah, but like to be Devo, fair, I think the villain but... problem goes further than just the main villain. I feel like because once you step away from the main villain. All, like, the sub-villains get, like, smeared along the way. Like, it just gets like... smushed in favor of this big villain. But it's like, if you're going to have the little villains, they should do something, not just stand there and get smushed. Which all of these, all of these, like, all the bus betas, basically. Oh, look, I'm just going to take your bodies. Now you're gone and dead and blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to touch you and you're going to fly away into space. It's great. Yeah, let's let's just do that. <laughs> Because that makes sense. I mean, if she, I mean, I, I feel like you're right with the anti-grav ma- manipulate, like manipulation, because she could just turn it off whenever she wants. Yeah. So, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, this episode was kind of weird. Yeah, it was. Because we got the Harry stuff, we got the DeVoe stuff, we got the Barry and Ralph stuff, we got the Breach. There's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. They're little bits, but maybe they should have spread them out a little bit. I don't know if it needed spreading out, but I think we it reached a point where it's like, these all have to be our pieces of the story we have to tell before we can move on, you know? Mm. It just so happens we came to a weird crossroads and it all has to get out now. Yeah. I don't know that I mean, it was it wasn't really that flowy. I mean, it was it did jump around a lot in this yeah. episode. But Yeah, cuz what? There are 22 episodes this uh Uh yes, I want to say there's 22. Oh, so it doesn't even tell me. Uh-huh. Um uh, I'm assuming that's the usual twenty two or twenty three um and we're on seventeen yeah we're we're getting close to the wire so 
Yeah. That's the Flash. <laughs> yeah. I, that's all I have to say. Um, next episode is Lose Yourself. Is it about Harry? I don't know. <laughs> Are we going to get an Eminem bus meta? Eminem? <laughs> Lose Yourself is oh. one of his sequels. <laughs> I literally pictured a bag of M&M's. Oh, I didn't realize okay he met too. the rapper. Uh, Ralph considers crossing a line to defeat the Thinker. When Barry and Team Flash find a way to enter the Thinker's lair, Ra Ralph considers crossing a dangerous line to defeat Devon. Meanwhile, Joe is concerned by Harry's recent behavior. Good! Joe is gonna confront him about it. I honestly think it should have been, uh, so, uh, so, 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 what's her face? The DA? I was gonna say Celeste, but I don't think that's right. Cecile! No. Cecile, Cecile, there we go. Yeah, you know what, that would have been... I don't know, maybe uh, they not both all... will confront him. We haven't heard from her recently. No, not since... Um, they went for coffee, I think. Yeah, and, you know, she's probably getting closer to popping out those babies. I'm she assuming the cool. powers... Yeah. yeah, she was at, what, seven months last time we saw her? I so, so. Um, those powers are probably getting a little strong, and she would be the one person to go talk to Harry. Especially if, you know, there's extra going on in his head. So maybe after Joe realizes that there's something up, that maybe Cecile will be sent in for reconnaissance or something. Reconnaissance. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I know you're, like, super pregnant, but could you, like, uh, mind spy on my friend for me? <laughs> He's your friend, too. Don't forget. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you gotta be nice. <laughs> um, shit, I was gonna say something. <laughs> Oh, um, them finding a way into DeVoe's lair, because they were working on, or they had just figured out, like, last episode, that, uh, it was yeah, a pocket dimension. A pocket dimension, yeah. yeah. So, they, they, you know, must be working on it, trying to get, or at least trying to find it. You know what? They should probably take a page from DeVoe's book and put Star Labs in a fucking pocket dimension. Or at least put some locks on the damn door. <laughs> yeah. People keep walking in. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Worst fucking security ever. I yeah. think they would have learned something from freaking Oliver or something. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We le we learn that they don't learn in this show. Yes, <laughs> there we go. Speaking of no Oliver. No one ever learns. What are you talking no. about? <laughs> no, no one, no one ever learns. Speaking of Oliver, do we want to uh, shimmy on over to Arrow? Yeah. Sure, why not? Segway. Right. Well, Segway. <laughs> this, this episode primarily was like, could have been done, it's like, it was like two stories, basically. And it was very distinctly, they were very distinctly separated half the time. So, we're just going to start off right off as soon as they open. You're in a box van with about six cops with a Dinah. They're the only six cops that aren't corrupt in the freaking... Oh. Yeah. Or the only ones they found. Anyways, they're going after Anatoly to get to Diaz to see where he's, you know, um, manufacturing vertigo and stuff like that. Um, well, they got to Anatoly and everything. They arrested him. And they were prosecuting him and... As they get to, you know, they show them back at the, um, well, we'll get a flashback to Diggle and Ollie on the roofs because, um, Dinah kind of let them in. I'll know what they're going to do, but, uh, kind of, they ran interference. I'm going to cough here. Yeah. But no, no, no. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, they, um, Finally get back to the police break, you know, the police station. And the chief, she can't figure out how she's trying to reprimand Dinah for going after Anatoly and how how did you get this, you know? You went above my head and Ollie walks in. He's like, Yeah, she came to me. I figured we didn't want to get these people, you know, let these people go away. So I issued the warrant, you know, going over her head, because they know that she's on the tape. 
And he said that he even contacted the DA to get this thing, you know, extradited and everything, right? Well, then all of a sudden comes in the DA and says, like, yeah, no, let him go. We have nothing. We have nothing on them. We can't do it. And then he throws out that, you know, if you continue with this, you are under indictment and speculation being the arrow. This is not going to look good. And then they kind of put two and two together and we're like, dude, Diaz has the DA in their pocket. So, knowing this, they were like, yeah, well, all he does the only thing he could do. He fires both the DA and the chief. And he gets away with it? Because he's yeah. the mayor. Because oh. he's the mayor. Right. He, got, he fire, fired both of them. Not before he got an idea of why they did it. She was doing it to help her family. Yeah. Um, kind of money, just money. In general, he was doing it because his son had can has cancer, and Diaz found out about this. Ouch. And it was just like, yeah. So it's yeah, it doesn't it didn't hold well. But yeah, I know he fired. But before she left, she fired. This comes at the end, of the, you know. But it's all I'm just trying to get you know this story taken care of. Then we can go on to another story. Before she left, she fired Dinah and and um, and the uh, and all the other cops. The, the she fired she, all, all. She fired all the good cops. The good cops. All, all right. cops that were on the take, and that included um, Curtis's little boyfriend. Oh. Um, they tried to hide the cops, but one cop ratted them out. Mm. And, of course, he died. Um, snitches get stitches. <laughs> it just, yeah, it, it. they ratted him out, and this is when and um, the, he went to shoot at, I can't remember his name, Curtis's boyfriend, so I'm going to call him. Yeah. He went and shot at him. Curtis went in front of him oh. and got took the bullet. Well, as the shoot has gone out, he gets Curtis undercover. And he wants to check out, you know, where he got shot and stuff. He pulls down his, zips down his shirt. And lo and behold, he has his vigilante suit underneath it. Uh-oh. After his little viper and all, you know, said that he 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 doesn't like the vigilantes. Oh. Wait, isn't his vigilante suit this giant leather jacket? How did that fit under his... It's more streamlined now. Okay. Apparently. It's I don't know. Like... Maybe it's his undersuit. I don't know, but it was under his, under his yeah. shirt. It's like a leotard. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Oh. But they do talk about it and they do come to figure out that, you know, after they all get fired and stuff that maybe being a vigilante isn't as bad. So it sounds like he might be joining the team. So he might be getting a new person on the second team. On the second not arrow team. Whatever they want to call themselves. They haven't really decided what they want to call not themselves arrow. yet. Yeah. The not arrow. The not arrow. Yeah. Well, then we just get a little bit of um, Black Siren and Quentin. Um, he definitely doesn't trust her, and he keeps saying she's just like, you know, I'm bored here in this in this um, apartment and stuff like that. He's like, well, I'm not holding you here. You could go out, but everyone thinks she's the real Laurel Lance. That you know, she's not Black Siren. And he like was like, well, then maybe you should start figuring her out, and he hands her. All her law books. Oh. And then we come to find out that's how um, the DA got Anatolia out. was because she was reading law books. And she gave them a way out. Mm. So she's trying. But at the same point, um, she told Diaz not to hurt Quentin, basically. She, doesn't, she won't let Diaz hurt Quentin. So, so I think slowly but surely she's realizing that this, uh, you know, might be what she's wanted all along kind of thing. Mm. But I thought that until the very end oh. when she's talking to Diaz and then they land a big smooch on each other. It really was kind of disgusting. Ew. Yeah. So I don't know what her game is because at one moment, you know, she's having, you know, these 
realizations of what she could have had kind of thing. And then the next minute she's, or maybe she's just playing both, both sides, just trying to keep herself and people she cares about safe, which is totally could be possible, but we don't know. Yeah. Well, on the Diggle and Always side, <laughs> F- Felicity keeps pushing, is keep pushing Ollie to tell Diggle that he's not going to pass down the arrow suit, basically. And Diggle, you know, wants the arrow suit. He thinks he could do this. Well, he finally tells him, I can't let it go. It's a part of me. You know, it's a part of me. I can't let this in. Um, He's like, my son understands. I can't. We're basically telling Diggle, you're not getting the suit. Oh, boo-hoo, Ollie. You were so <sighs> quick to give it up before. She's such yeah. a fucking prick. I mean, I, I understand. I understand I mean, both when sides. He, yeah, when he wasn't the... I mean, when he talked to Thea last week, I mean, he when he wasn't Arrow, he, he felt like there was something missing. There was a part of him that wasn't there anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I understand that. And I mean, on the other side, you know, Diggle wants this, but also he should understand it too. You know what I mean? And that's where I feel like instead of being little bitches and fighting each other, <laughs> they should come up <laughs> And sit down and be like, "All right, let's fi- let's figure out an identity for Blue you, Diggle. Arrow. It, 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 <laughs> figure out something that works for you, and we'll work together on it, and we'll be friends." Hey, yeah, idea. Um, let's just say this didn't end well. No. Yeah, of course not. Um, straight up, they started trading insult for insults. Um, like Diggle threw out, "We would still have a team." If you didn't spy on them, I didn't like it from the beginning. I should have said something. It was all your fault that they did this. And then they go on and on and on. I mean, and then it got, I mean, it got low. To the point Diggle was like, well, look at your son. If things didn't happen, he would still have his mom because of you. Low blows. Low blows. And then freaking Ollie turns around and says, yeah, well, I at least I didn't shoot my own brother. Uh, I was actually just going to say, did he bring up the brother? Because Oh my god, they were, I mean, if you want to go back and just watch the scene of them just fighting insult to insult, I mean, they were were doing it intentionally to hurt each other, but at the same time, I'm sitting there going, this needed to come out. This needed to happen. It was like boiling up in the, in, in both of them, this needed to happen. Well, after that, they start throwing punches. I mean, all around the Arrow Cave, whatever you want to call it. They were throwing punches left and right, left and right. And finally, Felicity comes in and is just like, what the hell is going on, you guys? You know, what the... She's just like, I don't even understand, right? Anyways, they finally just put their put it aside because she found out where Diaz's, um, the Vertigo shipment where his stash was. So the two of them go out and and actually it felt better with them two now. It felt like the air was cleaned out. <laughs> and you know what I mean? It just felt less tense and less like something was just about to happen. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. but they realized that, you know, they have to work together for this. Well they blew up his his stash. A vertigo and stuff, so they cost him millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. I mean, they blew up the whole entire building. Um, cool. Yeah, and at the same time, Anatoly took one of the young officers that arrested him and shot him. Ooh. So there's one less officer, and he was a young guy. He, well, they said in his thing on TV that he was. I think he was a veteran of like seven, six or seven years. So he wasn't very old. Okay. Hmm. He was a young guy. He was like maybe late twenties. But yeah. So, I mean, things are just piling up right now. They're getting, you know, well, after they blow up and everything, they blow up the place and they find out this, this cop died and everything. Basically, they sat and talked in the bat cave. Well, arrow cave. What do you want to call it? It's a cave. <laughs> it's a cave. It's a cave. Diggle quits. 
Good for him. He just quits. So he's and, um, now? And then he went to look his talk. Well, in this one, he was kind of talking with Lila Ly- Ly- about, you know, things. And she, it's the first time I've seen her in forever. But now she's trying to recruit Diggle to go work for Argus. Because okay. that's worked well in the past, historically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sarcasm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, so... And now... The DA and the chief are going after Ali for um, wrongful termination. Another moral idea. Well, technically, it it is. Mm -hmm. I mean... Well, they're going after him for for wrongful termination, and they're trying to impeach him at the same time. Hmm. So... I mean, it's it's, not wrongful termination, but that's if he can prove that they were corrupt. Mm-hmm. If he can't, then they're they're gonna get their way. Yeah. Oh, no, I have bad news bears. Bad. Well, also, when they said, I mean, I'm pretty sure they have recordings, like in, in the office, they have recordings in the room, his office. So with mm-hmm. them saying why, you know, that they are under his thumb, basically. And he even said the DA even said he goes, "You've already lost this fight, and you don't even know." And that was said about, I think, two other times in this episode. So yeah. I don't, I know, we know that Diaz wants to go after the city, he wants to rule the city, but the question is why? What's his end game, really? I mean, what is it besides just ruling the city? It takes more than just wanting to be King Honcho, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we haven't got a clear indication as to why Diaz is doing this. And then we don't also don't have a clear indication as to what side really um, Laurel's on. Uh, I believe this is another uh, confusing W villain problem where the plans yeah. become more and more unclear. <laughs> I mean, I feel like he, he, he on his side, he knows what the fuck he wants. And for him, it's clear. But for the viewers, not clear at all. Yeah. No. Whereas for DeVoe in The Flash, he's not clear of fucking anything yeah, anymore. He might, yeah, he might not be <laughs> clear about it. No, no. So it it, it, it follows the same set of rules, but they're different. All right, I'll take it. But yeah, so, I mean, as you can see, it's just basically, it's just, this one was just, like, two two stories put in this with a little bit of tidbits in between. But mm-hmm. yeah, the big thing, Diggle quitting. So we'll have to see how that all, how that all comes out to play. And if he does join Argus or what's going on, we don't know. It's quite interesting, huh? If we're going to see more Lila or not, or what's going to happen to the rest of the cops. Um, and if uh, Curse's boyfriend is going to join them. But that's it. I can read you a little synopsis about this thing. Sure, yeah. yeah. A, little, a little bitty one. <laughs> Oliver is visited, visited by a ghost from his past. In his darkest place yet, Oliver wonders if wonders if he has failed every everything, being a father, a mayor, a hero. His frustration rising, Oliver lashes out at Felicity and William, and surprising the two and, people who are on his side. The only and a surprising two. visit and a surprising visit from an old friend has Oliver questioning his next move. So I saw he's uh, getting. I was just saying, we're getting someone from this past, so. I it's called it. Fundamentals. So, whoever it is, I don't know. Wouldn't that be a shit? Who's still alive from his past? past? Like, Wouldn't that be a shit? Storm if it was Shadow's dad. He's dead, though. We don't know that for sure. Yeah, we Who's do. It? Yeah, we do. They murdered him in front of her. Like, how far in the past? The people who were murdered in front of other people have still come back. Yeah, I know, but he wasn't, as far as we know, he wasn't drinking the, uh... uh as far he, as we know. I know, well, he was on that way. island for how long? He was on that island for how long? I don't know. Before all he got there? Oh, yeah, it old Shadow! Child. It's probably oh. Talia. I mean, like, come on. It's just Talia. It's probably Talia. Then, I, I don't know. It took me a while to figure out who the fuck Shadow was. Oh, yeah. I, I, I now remember. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. I'm it's good. Just a, it's an old friend. 
um, it sounds like someone that's going to make him think about things, kind of. So it might not be Talia, because Talia's out for his act, out to kill him. Everyone else from his past is dead, so I, <laughs> like, I don't know who it could be. <laughs> I don't know either. Maybe, uh... <laughs> Maybe it's a ghost from his past. So I don't a, know. A ghost from his past. <laughs> because, you know, Sarah Lance counts as an old friend, and she's still around. She, I, I'm not saying that she'd cross over to, you know, talk some sense into him, because she doesn't even know her life for one fact anyways. So, but I mean. I mean, I could probably go and look at who, you know, the lineup, the cast lineup is for next week, but I'm not going well, to do it. That'd be cheating. Yeah. I know, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna do it. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Convictions. Black Lightning. Sure. Okay, this episode is called "The Resurrection and the Light: The Book of Pain." I fucking I love, love the, these titles. They're so. I, I so love cool. the titles, but they're so long. I know, but they're so cool. <laughs> They're so long, though. <laughs> uh, but they are really cool. As yeah. far like they always, they sound obscure. Like you're reading it from the Bible or something. But when you watch the episode, it really does relate to the title. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Man, let's just talk about Khalil first, because. Holy Jesus! I did not. What? <laughs> He rolls up with just dreads and he's strolling down the street and he's talking like he's gangster and it's like, whoa. He's a fucking cyborg. Yeah. Yeah, he has a spinal implant. It's making him walk. And then what can... The, the he's strength? Really strong, yeah. Like, what did they make him into? It's obvious that he... They... Because they, you know, they put this implant in him so he could move around. Yeah. From what we know, it was really painful, but now he's okay. Mm -hmm. Because he's fully regenerated and it's fused with his body because of some freaking serum that they put in him that made him regenerate so fast that his hair grew fucking ten fucking feet. Yeah, I <laughs> bet you it's the same stuff that made Tobias whatever Tobias is. It's gotta or be. Or a variation of it. It's gotta be. Because... Mm -hmm. I mean, we did see, like, uh, Tobias, too, this episode, where, you know, you, you saw a little bit of his chubby belly, just a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> you got to see, like, the lightning scars that he's yeah. still, like, he's still healing. He's still healing. But, yeah. like, the interaction between Khalil and Tobias, you could tell Khalil is, like, he's fighting the morals in his head, like, he's like, oh, I don't want to do this, it's gonna hurt somebody, but... I, I owe them because they've saved my life. Well, Tobias is shooting off rhetoric like, you owe us, you have to do this for us. Mm -hmm. Like, there's not a choice. It's not, I want to do this for these people because they rescued me. No, it's you do this. There is no you not doing this. Yeah. <sighs> He, he did even threaten that he was going to take the implant out, right? Yeah, he threatened he would rip it out of his spine. And shove and it down his throat. And feed it to him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, it's kind of like... Tobias is building his own army. And Khalil is the first soldier. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I he He seems to also just have... You said he was fighting, like, in himself. Mm -hmm. mor morally. Yeah. I feel like there's an aggression behind that, too. Well, I mean, he's also pissed. Because yeah. he got this way in the first place. He's still pissed about getting shot and losing, you know, everything that he worked towards. Yeah. I get it. I mean, he was on his way out of Freeland... And, you know, he had a scholar athletic scholarship and, you know, people loved him because he basically was a shining light for them. And he feels like that's been all ripped away. So I understand that he has like this animosity, the aggression, just it's hate fueled, I want to say. 
I think it, a, not a that portion he, of it, yeah. I, not that it's like he hates a certain person or a certain thing. It's just that he he's hates angry. the fact he's angry. He hates the fact that you know he lost shit, and he probably is mad that he's he's angry. He's angry that he's angry. Mm-hmm. Which happens, people. <laughs> you can't be angry that you're angry. <laughs> you can, and, and I know it happens with me with a couple different emotions, but you can just put yourself in a cycle. Where you no longer remember the thing that made you mad in the first place, you are just mad. <laughs> and then you're mad that you forgot. Yeah, yeah, and it just, and keeps, it just keeps going. going. <laughs> I uh, feel like Khalil's kind of dealing with that whole cycle right now. Yeah. Uh, and he's also stuck in that cycle by a man who's threatening to rip his spine out, so... Um, literally, yeah, you know, literally. K- Khalil would have been fine. He would have lived a life without this implant. Yeah. Um, Tobias is actually threatening to kill him. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's, it's, oh boy, this, this poor kid. And you can tell he really wants to be with Jennifer, but it's obvious, like, she's, he's like, hey, look at my back. It's all shiny and shit. And she's like, whoa, how did that happen? Who did that to you? And he immediately took, like, a f- offense to that and, like, a defensive, yeah. like, obvi- for good reasons. He's probably not supposed to even show her at all. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, for him to be, like, not being able to be, like, the doctor said, you will never be able to move again. And then him be, like, strolling down the street all fancy and, and like, skipping. Not just that, he flip- jumped off a roof. Yeah. And, of course, she's going to ask questions. So, I, I know well, she's he, smart. She's a smart girl. And I feel like he's smart enough to realize that she's a smart girl and she's going to ask questions. But... <sighs> He kind of wishes she could ignore it just so he could go back to how they were. Yes, exactly. Because he wants her back so bad. Like, she was his best friend before they were dating. Mm-hmm. So, to have that... She was... To have that rock back? Because even when he was going through all his therapy and trying to, you know, get better, she was right there by his side. She yeah. skipped... She She dropped out of a bunch of stuff in high school so she could spend more time with him. Like, all her extracurricular activities, she just dropped because she wanted to help him. Which, mm-hmm. I mean, <sighs> I understand why he got all distant with her. Because, you know, it is kind of like what he's gone through is traumatic and it's it's not nice. You're going to feel shitty about it. But, you know, she was she was really trying to support him in any which way she could. And I, it kills me, we'll never know, but uh, pretty sure... The only reason he got pissy at her, he got distant with her, is because Tobias was whispering in his ear. Yep. And specifically about her dad. So, obviously, it's gonna... He's gonna have mm-hmm. aggression towards her. Yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, we got, and I it was super subtle, but a little bit more information about the vaccine slash green light. It removes the flight instinct from the fight or flight. That is what Proctor says in his, like, he had this whole long-winded thing. He was talking about a lot of shit, but I grabbed onto that and I was like, that makes a lot of things make sense. I feel like because he was, it was long-winded, I didn't catch that because after... I had to pause it because I was just like... <laughs> I I didn't catch that. Yeah, because it just... might be, it might be because I don't enjoy the character. Like, I kind of have this stupid thing where there's an if there's like an actor or an actress, and I don't like them on other shows, and they carry over onto another show. I automatically don't like the character that they're they're playing. Oh yeah, no, I and hate the actor. He's the worst. And <laughs> so, like, when they come on screen, I automatically just. Det- this the taste just kind of like it like this like just takes over me and i automatically start to like block them out Mm. and i shouldn't do that it's it's not a thing i should do (laughs) but i do and that's probably why i didn't catch that because he started talking and i zoned out (laughs) (laughs) so that got me thinking about everything that's that's not only black lightning's done Mm -hmm. but that Anissa's done. 
even that Jennifer's done. Because Jennifer, even, you know, she, she says she wants to be normal, she doesn't want the power, she doesn't want to save people. When they were taking Jefferson out of the building, when they arrested him last episode, mm-hmm. she stood her ground in front of the cops. And Jefferson yeah. had to very, very, you know, clearly talk her down. Yeah, <laughs> there's just, and, without and, revealing anything. Yeah, and the, it's so tough. Looking back, there's so many instances of they do not have a flight response, mm-hmm. and I think that contributes to why um, Lynn didn't like who he became when he used his powers. And I think when he uses his powers, he gets more aggressive. He gets less flighty. You know, he's stands his ground he's more aggro they they it's kind of like an invincibility thing Mm. where i mean if you don't fear something you're you're obviously going to stand your ground and you're not gonna back down you're not gonna give up and that's exactly yeah that's exactly what they do like you not once have i seen jefferson run away from a fight or stop fighting even when he was getting his ass handed to him and now that you mention it, Anissa's been the same way. She's actually been, like, proactively looking for a fight. Mm-hmm. Especially in the beginning. She was, like, she went and she she sought out those drug dealers. And she whooped them and, <laughs> like, just about killed them. Yeah. And, you know, even though she knew who Black Lightning was, when Lynn's, like, when there was an invasion in her lab, um, because Black Lightning was coming at her. Mm-hmm. She didn't um, back down. She didn't back down. She didn't be like, oh, wait a second. Well, he also just didn't give her time to be like, wait a second, you yeah. know, I'm helping. But, like, yeah, like, their confrontation, like, that whole, like, where I would be like, I'm avoiding the fight. I, I'm going to yeah. go hide in the corner. <laughs> they're, like, right in the middle, and they're just, they don't, they don't see the, the consequences. They just start throwing punches. Yeah. And I, I think that that is directly tied to how, how much and how often they use their powers. Mm-hmm. Because Jefferson was not like that while he was on his little Black black Lightning hiatus. Mm. No, he was, he was very He was a lot passive. chill. Yeah, he was a lot more chill, a lot passive, mm-hmm. a lot of negotiation. Mm-hmm. Um, I think out of the three, Jennifer has shown some um, flexibility in that, where she's not quite so pig-headed as her her sister and her father. So I think maybe if anyone can break this kind of, like, aggro cycle, it'll be her. I think it's because her powers also work differently. That's true, yeah. Um, instead of, you know, producing the energy... You know, she's the one that... She produces the energy while um, Anissa and and her dad, Jefferson, they gather energy and that's how they use it. Mm -hmm. So... Maybe she is on the opposite side of the spectrum. Yeah. I kind of feel like, you know, because that she does have a little bit more mental control, Mm -hmm. or she will over her powers, because she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to go fighting. She just wants to be normal. Mm -hmm. She, She obviously can use her powers when needed. Like, in a dire situation, but I think ultimately she's still gonna want to distance herself away from the fighting. So, it does seem like she is different from the rest of the crowd. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be a problem, though. Like, she's a battery, and her dad siphons energy. I feel like there's going to be an issue there eventually. I don't think we're going to see it this season, obviously, because we have one more episode left. Honestly, but... I think I think that's potential for, like, good team-up maneuvers. He runs out of energy, she gives him some. There's that, but then there might be the point where it starts to feel too good, and he siphons too much, Mm. and does damage, rather than just benefiting from it. Mm. Yeah. That's what worries me. Mm -hmm. Because I've... Kind of knowing how this works is that... (sighs) I don't I still feel like especially like in the beginning where you know Gimli Ghibli gave him I Ghibli. Yeah. All right, <laughs> let's go watch Pope uh, Gambi. Uh, 
Abby. I was just going to let you go with Gimli. I, I was just going to let that go. I was, Gimli, Gimli. Yeah, let's let's go watch Gimli. Lord of the Rings. A little bit of Howl's Moving Castle inside. That's yeah. great. Um, no. Gimli. Gamby, uh, when he first made the suit, you know, and he, before he made the tweaks, it, the, the, using right, his powers well, in the suit, it was crazy. It was making him crazy, kind of like an addiction. He wanted to use the suit more often. He wanted to use his powers more often because it was making him feel good. But at the same time, it was killing him. So I, okay. I almost still feel like because of the, the I'm trying to be scientific about it, but I'm not. But because green light is a drug, and it's it's definitely related to how they got this way, well, how at least Jefferson got this way, that his powers kind of act a little bit of they have like an addictive nature. Mm -hmm. Not saying that they are go, he's not he's going to go into some sort of like he's going to be a junkie on his powers, but I'm saying like they are addictive to use. Yeah, and that would att attribute like attribute to. Um, him being more aggressive and wanting to get into the fight more often. It might be good that Lynn is looking into Jennifer's DNA. Yes. Not so that she can stop them from having powers, mm -hmm. but so that she can look at the genes and say, this is making you um, crazy. Mm -hmm. Here's a thing that might level you out. Let's let's treat it a little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit, so you can not be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the fights, man. The oh fights this episode. There were so many fights. Anissa and Crazy Lady. Cyanide. Cyanide. Oh my god. That fight. That was entire my fight reminded me of uh, fucking uh, the Kingsman. That movie. Which one? With the like secret agent, suit yeah. I, I think I've only seen the first one, so yeah. Just no, just some reason cyanide reminds me of the chick with the the sword metal legs. legs. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, I don't know why. I, you know what? I actually had to look to make sure she wasn't that that girl because <laughs> it she reminded me so much. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't have metal legs or swords for legs, guys no. and gals. No, she's <laughs> just a person that knows how to shoot things really, really well. And it's so funny because Cyanide went into that fight with Anissa thinking like, oh man, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wipe the floor with you. And when she gets hit, she's just like, what is happening? It's not only when she got hit, it's when she was shooting all those fucking bullets at Anissa. Yeah. Anissa's just standing there like, what if? <laughs> oh I God. love her so much. I love Anissa. Yeah. But Cyanide did learn. Yes, she That did. it's all in Anissa's breathing. And she hits because, her while she exhales. Yes, and that was like, <sighs> oh my god. But, you know, and this was like, this is bullshit. I'm gonna just whoop you. And I thought Cyanide was out for the count, to be honest. Not dead, but like, unconscious. Conscious for a be... while, yeah. Yeah, but... She's I tough. Resilient. She is yeah. resilient. And it was, a, it was a nice... This whole season, we've seen Cyanide just so calm, collected, and every time she does anything, it's really quick and effective and just mm -hmm. oh, having this drawn out fight it's just nice to see her in a different way well you could definitely see her thoughts like mm. she she's not a very good poker player guys no you could read no. everything on her face she's when things were happening pretty good tactician though yes yes like that was impressive mm -hmm. uh and the Khalil just like shooting his classmates. That was just that was hard to watch. Especially since of all the, the you know yeah. the recent things that's been and happening. It and it was just trank darts. Actually, was there green light in those? Um, what what how whatever he was shooting was to um basically a, a hinder powers. Oh. So. I feel like he he knew which of his classmates had powers that could be activated, and he was going in. I think he had targets, and the ones he okay. shot were ones that they were going to um, use for their the ASA's shit that they're doing. Okay. 
or, you know, or Tobias had like inside information knowing that those kids have the ability to have powers and he's taking them for himself so he can build his, his little army. Because hmm. uh, that, that's ultimately what I think he's doing. I think he's he wants to just he wants to blow the Shadow Council out of the water. He he wants he just wants everything for himself. He wants to be in charge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it may have looked like in the episode where it, it just seemed like he was all willy nilly shooting, um, which which did make it feel really uncomfortable. I feel, but I feel like he he had targets. Like the kids that he shot were shot for a reason, mm. and they were to. It was basically to anesthetize them and pull them out of the building and then do fucking experiments because that's what they do on this show with kids. Yeah, it's, it's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but man. Cleo punches Jefferson so hard in the chest, his heart stops. There was also a dent in his armor. In his armor. Oh my God. I didn't notice that. I was too busy freaking out. <laughs> I, I know, because I, I knew Jen was going to be the ultimate lifesaver there. But I mean, mm-hmm. like, to see him just, like, dead, it was like, oh, shit. And yeah, the fact Gambit that had the their life signs on his computer, right? Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Oh my god!" Like he's flatlining. Yep, do something. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, Jennifer saves him. Mm-hmm. She shocky shockies she him, him back, yeah, she, back to life. Basically, does the <laughs> yep clear later. Um. <laughs> But then, you know, Khalil and them leave thinking that Black Lightning's dead again. Mm-hmm. They want his body. The ASA does anyways. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's... Tobias went in there. Yeah, they were, it was connected because Tobias went in there to... Take him um, alive. To take him alive. Yeah. But it didn't seem like he gave a shit very much. Like, he didn't really care that Black Lightning was... It was just like, okay, we're done. We're, go- we're going. Mm-hmm. But he's not... Dad, so here we go again with the whole Tobias thinking he's <laughs> one shit and he hasn't. Because yeah. <laughs> you know Jefferson's going to be like, oh, I am killing people now. I'm going to whoop some butts. In my freaking out over Jefferson flatlining, did I missed it. Did Khalil see Jennifer with, or did Jennifer see Khalil? No. Mm-mm. But I mean, no. Jefferson's going to tell her. Oh, yeah. Because as oh, soon yeah. as he he saw Khalil on the street, he uh, Anissa right Anissa away. did see Khalil as well. Oh yes, that's true. Yeah, but we know he's probably gonna be truthful because he was truthful in the beginning of the episode when he saw Khalil mm-hmm. walking around. So. Yeah. He yeah. Went straight to Jennifer and told her. So. Yeah. Like you know, stay away from him. He's dangerous. Yeah. Which. Hey. Turns out it's, it's a true. A teenager who doesn't listen. I wonder how that happens. But I mean, at least you know Jefferson's making good on his his promise to to be truthful. Mm-hmm. So that's a good sign. Because a lot of other characters in the DC universe don't know how to be truthful at all. <laughs> no, it's that's too one of our hard. Main... <laughs> one of our main complaints <laughs> over the whole blanket universe of DC. <laughs> And I wouldn't have such a problem with it if it didn't just keep happening and everyone's like, oh, we learned our lesson, and then they just didn't fucking learn their lesson. <laughs> I'm hoping that Black Lightning, especially going into season two, um, definitely changes that for me. Yeah. At least it happens on one show. I can have that much hope for it. <laughs> I feel like this is the this is the show to do it because not only is it a team dynamic, but it's a family dynamic. Mm-hmm. And this is a very smart family, every single one of them, and They're very intelligent people. Very intelligent people, and I, you know, just I believe, I believe that they can actually learn. I believe. <laughs> so I can share. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, we have a one last thing to talk about. Okay. And that's Lala. <sighs> He died again, and he came back again. God damn it. Did he? Yeah. Tobias freaking snapped, killed him at the beginning of the episode. Because he got pissed off. Because Tobias came back, found out that Lala was back, and was like, yo, I hate you. 
killed him again. And then at the end of the episode, he came back to life and is like, so now do you believe about the resurrection? That That's the line I remember. He, he did. He, he, he killed him again and then Lala came back. And, he, and it was like, you know, I, I had to prove something to you. And it was that you can be resurrected. Hmm. That is your power. I don't remember uh, Tobias being angry about it, though. I remember him being unsurprised because he calls Lala on the phone and says the devil deals the cards and then Lala mind like mind zombies walks to Tobias's place. I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure Tobias killed him again just to prove a point. Okay, he probably I don't did. know. He probably did. I just I don't, don't remember him being angry about him being there. I mean, to be fair, Tobias always looks angry, so I could have been mistaken, and he just killed him because he was happy about it. I don't know. No, 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 he killed, he killed, um, the guy who let his sister die. He congratulated him, he's like, good job pulling me out of there, but you left my sister to die. There was that whole line at the end where Tobias was explaining yeah. about the resurrection. I feel that, like that I that I remember, and I be, I believe that the ending happened. What you said, but in the beginning of the episode, he kills another guy. Um, sometimes I get things mixed up. <laughs> I actually f- had forgotten that that happened until just now. I mean, but I'm I'm I... curious about the the trigger word trigger phrase for for lala it's obviously going off of what lady eve was doing um part of her research Mm. because they did mention her too in that conversation at the end of the episode so i maybe maybe it was you know i don't know I think Tobias knows a lot more than he led on in the very beginning. I mean, he has been around a lot longer than a lot of the characters that we assume to know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but he it, it's clear he can kind of control Lala with this trigger phrase. Um, is it the magic of his bone dust? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's gotten so much of the bone dust from over the last few episodes because of Lady Eve and right, Gampy and sent stuff. sent it to him twice. Yeah. Like, at first I just thought that was a message they sent to him, but maybe it's actually something. Yeah, maybe it has, like, the alchemical or supernatural properties that, you know, she said. Oh my god, you bring had. alchemy magic into my DC shows, I will love you forever. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> no, that'd be great, man. While we're at it, bring in Zatanna. Just actual magic. Team up with Constantine. More actual magic. Eh. You yeah. know, Const- Constantine and, and Legends and stuff, that's happening. But I know, I know. That's Honestly, I happening. think if they would have done Constantine when they started doing all of this, the DC... Arrowverse, I think he, uh, the show would have took off. Oh, yeah. I mean, in this whole, like, block of the different DC shows and the way that they cross over into each other. I mean, Black Lightning excluded for now because... It's well, new. They haven't it's new. announced and, or said. Yeah. Um, we still don't know if it exists in a current universe, Supergirl's universe. It's own. Like, we have no idea what world it's on. But I, it's going to happen eventually. They're going to cross over. Hmm. Um but yeah, if, definitely. If Constantine came around with these block, this block of DC hero shows, Constantine would still have gone on, definitely. But it was on a different network too, wasn't it? it was it was on? Oh my God, was it on NBC? Jesus, I think you it was muted. On... muted. Yeah, just like. Um... Oh no, Rachel was sorry. Oh, sorry. I was in the middle of God. I was like, am I going to cough or not? Um, yeah, I think it was on a different... Kind of like how Supergirl. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was on NBC. Okay. Yeah. That, that's old school. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it was done before these shows started. 15, I think. Yeah, 
the the first season I think was in 13 or 14 2013 2014 it was an older series I mean it we say older series it was not as old as uh Arrow no, no. it definitely no. wasn't that old um no but it was I'm pretty sure it was 2015 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it is uh, available on uh, the CW Go site now, seed. so you can or Seed. Uh, CW Seed. I, I was mixed up with HBO. Yeah. Um, CW Seed, so you can go back and watch the first season of. And I just did, and I'm excited and to watch a cartoon. We'll have to pick days to do the cartoon um, series. I I still have to watch Constantine yet before I watch the cartoon, so <clears throat> I have to get on that. <laughs> Well, we have to do the Ray first anyway, so you got time. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Constantine was on NBC, and it was 2014-2015. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Was it before, you know, Arrow? But I think they thought, oh, Arrow's, you know, pretty popular, so let's try... But I think they brought it in. If they would have brought it in like this this year, like with introducing him into Legends and then bringing in his own show, it would have been fine. It would have taken off. I mean, they, they definitely would have had to lead into Legends because of the the way the first season worked um, mm -hmm. with his storyline. But yeah, I feel like in the bulk of things, because he did, he made appearances in Arrow as well, right? One. One. One or two, so, I think. It was one or two. Having very... him speckled all over the universe and then giving him his new show kind of in the middle of everything would have worked out. But I feel like the plans that they have for him in the future. I is, hope. I, I mean, he, he plays it amazingly, and I would love to see. I mean, I did watch some of the TV show, and I love the actor, and he played it amazingly, and he still does. Mm -hmm. And and it's, it's new, and it, you get to see he's... I mean, all intents and purposes, he's not a quote-unquote lovable character. He's harsh. He's, you know, brass. He's, you he doesn't know, have a filter. He does, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't pull punches. But I like that about him. I mean, to be fair, if you're working with demons, you kind of have to know how to not sugarcoat things. Because demons aren't sugarcoated. They ain't he's sweet. also, like, uh, <laughs> drunk all the time. and That's true. Full of just self-loathing and self-pity, and mm -hmm. it's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's a treat to watch, really. It's it really is. It's different than all the other shows. That's what I like about it. Like him, he's different than any of the other people on the shows. Okay. I, I mean, he kind of was like roar, uh, was like Mick in a while, way for a while, but you know, the I don't know. That, I like him. Yeah, honestly, the thing that threw me off about his show, the show on NBC, was that the pilot was very different than the episode that followed. So the pilot set up something that the next episode completely dropped. That mm -hmm. was what killed me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So just be mm -hmm. prepared for everything that gets said. Not everything. Yeah, so Basically I don't Basically just know. the sidekick. Yeah. The sidekick that gets set up in the first episode. Don't expect her to stick around. She won't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She didn't test well, so they replaced her. Is who exactly is what it is. <laughs> she didn't test. She didn't. Well, I think it also it depends on the network they they have. Like when Supergirl was on like, ABC. ABC, yeah, no, or no CBS, uh, CBS. CBS. It was okay. They people liked it, but people weren't like into it. I, love but I, I think I know, I know, but I think she just. She, I think Supergirl's done better go into the CW. Because not only can they do better crossovers and they don't have any of the legal stuff because they all own it, it makes it, it makes it easier to do crossovers. It makes it easier to do story crossover lines and stuff like that. I, I almost feel like Supergirl's first season was a little bit more um, limited as mm -hmm. far as, like, not, not limited, but because it was on this big national network. Yeah, it, it, you could was, only do so much. It, it, there wasn't the controversy was kind of muted, whereas like like especially with the you know the the episode that was um, that people related to the the French bombing. 
the bo- the bombing in France mm-hmm. where they oh. they aired it out of order because of it. Um, I feel like you know I, I don't think CW would do that. No, I, I CW don't. CW is not really a news. No station and i you know what i can't really predict whether or not they would have done that because they might have just for pr's sake um yeah so that didn't they also might have just been like they might have been just like well supergirl's not going to air this week next week kind of thing yeah yeah they would have taken a break yeah because when it did get aired out of order it was really weird it it did i don't think it was that weird honestly those two episodes um maybe like one thing didn't make sense but yeah I don't know know. is there no synopsis for next week's Black Lightning there is sorry we just went on a tangent and uh, we did yeah there was a huge tangent my computer was freaking out so I was distracted anyway next episode is the season finale the resurrection and the light the book of pain wait oh no wait no, no I'm reading the wrong one am I reading the wrong one should be episode 13? Uh, Shadow of Death. Uh, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow of Death, the book of something. Oh, God. No! I have to do it on my phone because my computer is freaking out. Uh, Wikipedia, don't you fuck with me. <laughs> Uh, Shadow of Death, Death the, the Book, Book of, of War. War. Uh, oh. The, yeah, that's definitely a Tobias and Black Lightning showdown. Yeah. It br- Son of a bitch, the, the link brings me to the synopsis for this episode. Okay, I'll read it then. Do you have one? Okay, go. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tobias returns to Freeland. Oh, wait, is this the right one? No. No? What the? Yeah, see? Fuck. The link takes you to the wrong one. What uh, the hell? The I don't aftermath, think there was an <laughs> The aftermath of the showdown with Black Lightning leaves everyone reeling. Tobias gathers his forces. I don't know if there's more than that. It won't let me click on it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's a finale, and they're yeah. probably not. there's probably not much more than that anyway, so. Yeah. Um, God I'm damn wondering it, Wikipedia. just how many answers we're really going to get. Honestly, I don't think we're going to get much more. I think it's going to be action-packed, and it's going to end with a death. Ooh. Who do you think's dying? Um, Lynn. Lala again. No, Lynn. <laughs> oh, that would be upsetting. It no, would. Lynn has to figure out the Jean stuff. and That's it... exactly why she's going to die. Ugh. <laughs> No! I know no. who's gonna die. The assistant okay. principal. Yeah, she deserves it. <laughs> well, no, she needs, like, a little bit of redemption. Because, like, you mm. see, I don't know if she's gonna get it. But I feel like there's enough, like, she cares enough about these kids that maybe she'll do something and die in the process. You know what I mean? I mean, she she cares about Jefferson, too. Eh, she does, so I, that's I, weird. I feel like, even if she did find out, like, it was confirmed that he was Black Lightning, she'd she still be like, well, shit, yeah. yeah, she might, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. And for Black Lightning, we're going to do a separate podcast for that, just like we're going but, to do a separate yes. one for uh, Legends. Legends. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cool. Nikki, where can the people find you? On Twitter, at LadyVenom24, L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. Rachel. Hey, you can find me at Twitter, at Viking76, and I'm hoping to get back onto Twitch, and it's just Viking Witch. I don't know where I ever get from. over being sick. Fuck. So I'm, Still yeah, coughing it. into people, you know, to the microphone. <laughs> Not exactly, you know, no. beautiful. You can find me at uh, Cleomoto on Twitter, Twitch, and Pinterest. And you can find the place where I sell stuff. I sell, like, crowns and, and tiaras and shit. Nerdy things. Crafty things. Crafty things. Yeah. Uh, Cleomoto Crafts on Etsy and Facebook. Go find me. You can find all of us at AOC TV Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google+, Plus, right here on Twitch and YouTube, where you can watch our videos. Uh, and follow us on our Discord. Link is uh, somewhere down in the descriptions. 
It's, it's down there somewhere. Bye yeah. bye. You can't see me waving. Whoops. Well, we always wave, and oh. you can't see me. Oh crap! Ha ha ha! I do it on purpose. <laughs>